we are picking up in the workroom in the Vault of the Sages. The suppression mark just broke with a flash of light. Serathiel just looked up and said, Fuck. How do we react? Oh boy. Stun silence is good. Do I stares? Yeah, exactly. I feel like Gwen is just staring, like, holding his breath, waiting for something really bad to happen. Okay. Chaz, what are you looking like? What are you doing, saying? I feel like after the long silence, he's watching Serathiel very carefully, and then after the exclamation of fuck, he's like, is everything all right? Um, no. No, not really. What, um... What's wrong? V asks. Uh, that would that would take more words and more time than I have at my disposal. Do you feel the sudden urge to murder us? <laughs> no, no, I don't. Okay, that's good. Small victories, I suppose. Belantil has a very good poker face in the background, but there is a little bit of disappointment that this didn't just unleash. Don't feel like murdering? Ugh. <laughs> Damn it. What the fuck am I doing here then? Right? I feel like I, I let go. I had like a teleportation spell that I was like holding <laughs> because I was waiting for something terrible to happen. Serathiel stands up slowly and he says, would it, um, would it be all right if I, uh, Deferred all questions for a while? I'm really not in the mood to talk. Um, I, uh, I suppose it, um, the pain is gone from the mark? Yes. Yes, the uh, physical pain is gone. B definitely notices that phrasing. I feel like after that, Chaz is like, yeah, all right, if that's what you need, just let us know if you need anything else. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll, um, I think I'll head out for now. Um, just be careful. V doesn't want to just let you go, but he's not going to stop you, because this whole time he's been very, like, team free will. Team, you are good. You are ultimately good. I have to actually trust you on stuff. Comes back to bite you in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, Sir Ethiel just uh, steps out of the private room that they were using. Yes, V just starts working on dispelling all of the remainders of the ritual. Bell is kind of hanging there awkwardly. He's tempted to run after you, but I don't know if he would or not. He's not as impulsive as he seems. I share a look with Chaz. I mean, it's not like we shouldn't give him space, but do you think he's, you think he's going to be okay? That is hard to answer. But, on the bright side, we are still alive, eh? That's, that's true. That's true. High five. If nothing happened, nothing exploded. That's t- I really thought there was going to be a lot more violence. Oh my god. Oh, Chaz, I was prepared. I was prepared to get us all out of here. I really thought that this was just going to be, like, suddenly death, and, and I, I didn't know what to do about it. This is honestly probably the most terrified I've been in my entire life. Wow, you had no faith in me. Unbelievable. The admission of like, hey, I had a spell prepared just in case. Chaz kind of like raises an eyebrow at that. He's like, you thought it would go that badly. I just wasn't. Look, it's not that I don't trust Serathiel, but but I wasn't sure it was going to be Serathiel anymore, you know? And, you know, and I turn and like shoot daggers at the land heel. He's right here. And he can definitely still hear you. What exactly do you want me to say? I'm kind of disappointed. Oh, of course you're disappointed. Like, we're still alive. I'm so sorry. Wow. Wow. We're so sorry. Your boyfriend didn't immediately kill us. <laughs> that we're, our existence is just really disappointing for you. We're so sorry about that. Oh, no. Not about that. But he's he's not... Virnan interrupts him. He never was your Serathiel. This is not the God Eater, Belantiel. Bell just kind of sneers at V and just heads out because, all right, you don't want my help. I'm going to just go. Ritual's over. What do we need him for? It's fine. I stick my tongue out of his back, but only after I'm positive he's turned around. V is just quietly anxious and turns to you guys. And it's just, we don't 
want to raise any red flags, could one of you just go catch up to him and just kind of walk in? You don't have to say anything or like give him space. I touched my nose super fast. Chaz was already going to volunteer, you bonehead. (laughs) I just look at you. After learning that you had like an escape plan ready to go, he's like, well, I'm not going to let that one go for sure. I was going to take you with me, Chaz. It's fine. I'm willing to hang out with him alone, unlike some people. Okay, great, because I'm not. Yeah, I mean, just give him his space, but I just want to make sure that they don't see him coming back alone, you know? Yeah, of course. And I guess I will head out too and being like, all right. So is there anything that Chaz, you or Gwen would do during this time? You know, while you're giving Serathiel space, I'm just going to assume that everybody's made it back safely to wherever they were headed. I feel like I'm just like pacing. Just the nervous energy. Great. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Gwen, can you uh, help me sweep that up real quick? Can I Can I help you sweep up what up? I, I, can't you see I'm busy, Vernon? I might have had something for you if you weren't being such a, you know, jerk. (laughs) Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just really stressful today. I'm sorry. I know it's stressful for you, too. I'm just, oh, it's been a bad day. Maybe. I don't know. It's been a weird day. I feel like I expected there to be more of something. What did you want me to clean? Just, just those things. And he, like, gestures to used up spell components and stuff. I go over and, yeah, I tidy them up. I know that you do best when you actually have a task because it helps you, like, not just hyperventilate. (laughs) I wasn't hyperventilating. I was pacing really hard. Sure, you were not about (laughs) to have an anxiety attack. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. I have no one has ever been less anxious than me right now. (laughs) I do it for a little bit and then I look at him and I go, "Are, are you okay? Um, (laughs) yeah, I guess. Now that you're like actually finally looking at V, you start to notice the like worn down tiredness that he's had for the last couple of weeks. You, you don't look great. (laughs) Is it just, I guess it's been a lot, right? It's been a lot. (laughs) You don't know the half of it, Gwen, but yeah. Sir. Is there anything I can do? It's nothing I can do, so I doubt it. But I don't. So I, I mean, I feel like when you say I don't know the half of it, well, I've been here for a lot of it. So, <laughs> Fiernan, what's going on? Fuck. I've um. Well, we were successful saving your mother, and I thought maybe. And takes you a second, but you remember, he told you what happened during the glitching portal. He saw the destruction of Silvery Moon and the death of basically his entire family. But it hasn't happened yet. So? What did you do? (laughs) None of it mattered. I uh, tried anything I could think of. God, Viernan, what did you do? Are you okay? I, like, start checking his eyes to see if he, like, had a warlock pet. <laughs> I did not make a deal. <laughs> I, I 100% am not listening. I'm, like, prying open his own one eye with both of my fingers. Gwen, get off. Gwen, when did you wash your hands? Get off of me. Well, it's, I don't know. When was the last time we had a shower? It's been a while. Anyways, you don't- you Gross. Have, your eyes seem like they're the same color, but that doesn't mean anything. Could have been other things. Did you make a deal with a with an evil god like I did? No, I did not. No, I just- I I tried to get my family out of the city, that's all. Tried all sorts of things, but- It didn't work. No. Did you... Did you watch him die? Not directly, but... It's pretty easy when you see a memorial afterwards. He's looking up at him with, like, big eyes that are, like, you can tell are, like, five seconds away from, like, sobbing. No, no, don't. 
Gwen, it's... it's fine. It's not fine. I mean, some things are just faded. But maybe they don't have to... I don't... I... I got my mom back. I just... I know. Maybe we could do something else? Maybe maybe you shouldn't do the right thing. Like, it's a puzzle, but, like, you just... That wasn't the way to do it, so we'll have to start <laughs> over. And this is... Here, here, can I get, like, a book? Gwen. <laughs> just write down everything you did from start to finish. <laughs> what was the first thing you remember? Gwen, do you seriously think I haven't already tried that? Okay, but you didn't have me. I'm very good at taking notes. I... <laughs> No, I, um, there's only one variable I haven't tried yet, so I'll, uh, I'll see. What, what's, what's the, what's the variable, Vernon? I don't like the way you said that. Don't worry, it's, I'm not, I'm not killing myself for anything or anything drastic okay, like that. Okay, 100% it's thought that was what it was. No. <laughs> no, I think I know what the variable is, and I'm, pre- I'm going to agree that it's probably drastic. I think I know definition of drastic here is a little uh misleading what is drastic anyway <laughs> i mean we're like regularly going back in time and fucking with our own timelines i feel like at this point all of us have like bad definitions of the word drastic <laughs> if, you're not, if you if you ever need to talk you know i'm, I'm here i people don't they forget i'm here sometimes and i understand i'm very little and i talk a lot but i, I would do whatever I'm your friend. I would do whatever you need. I appreciate that. I really do, Gwen. And uh, he just, he pulls you into like a one-armed hug. I do a full two-armed hug and it's (laughs) too much. (laughs) Uh, Okay, enough. (laughs) Can't breathe. Can't breathe. Okay, oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, I'm just... Anything you need, okay? Anything at all? And please just promise me you won't... You won't do anything that puts yourself in danger. I mean, aside from the regular stuff we do, that's fine. But you know what I mean? Like, excessively dangerous. Drastically dangerous, one might say. (laughs) I promise this one doesn't require any time travel. (laughs) Okay. Well. Okay. He just, like, looks at him awkwardly and goes back to sorting spell components. <laughs> v finishes cleaning and is grateful that you finally let this drop and does eventually just kind of tap you on the shoulder when you get, like, a little too into sorting all the spell components. Like, they're cleaned up now, but now you're sorting them. They need to be alphabetized! Which is a little more like Chaz. Chaz is rubbing off on you! Love that! He... Goes over to where he had a couple of books and things set aside, just in case they needed them for the ritual. And he tugs one out from the bottom, gets your attention, and just hands it over to you. It's something on, like, warlocks. His his face lights up until he sees the title, and then he's like, oh. (laughs) Oh, I... (laughs) Uh, Now, since so many packs are dependent upon the patron themselves and even just the individual warlock. There's not a lot of information out there, but I figured you wanted at least some place to start. And well, um, my dad found a copy of this and he made an extra. I'm already leafing through the pages as you speak, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, no, 100%. And in the middle, like there's a, it looks like a bookmark, but it's actually... Your library card. Oh. oh. What? What is? What is this? <laughs> I um. Oh my god! Oh my god! I got you. Bearded. He gets up and he does like a flying hug, where he like leaps like a good foot across the room into his arms. Oh god! Oh god! Oh no! I know. I do not have the decks for this. <laughs> <laughs> he just. He straight just like tackles him. Oh god, it's the return of the glomp. <laughs> I know, I was gonna say, you glomp him! I love that. It's like, how How did you, how did you, oh my god, this is the happiest I've ever been in my entire life. I'm happier than we brought my mother back from the dead. <laughs> wow. Wow. I will not tell Stella that. Look, I've been trying to do this my entire life. I just got the idea to bring my mom back from the dead, like, I don't know, a couple months ago. 
Your your entire life? Really? M- uh, most, much of, most of it. I thought it was like the last six months. <laughs> I feel like this is something he would have wanted to do since he was like a little nerdy kid in enormously oversized glasses. Okay, valid. Your only other goal is to somehow get into Candlekeep, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He leaves him on the floor and gets up and, like, looking at the library card and turning it over. And, oh my gosh, and look at, like, the engraving on this is so fine. And just, like, the cardstock they used. Oh, I would have expected nothing less from the best library in the entirety of Faerun. But, I mean, come on, this is impressive. You have to admit, Raybeerin. Right, how did you even... How how did you... Uh, yeah, I pulled a couple strings. How did you even... How How did you... How did you get this? I've been talking to them for months. My dad owed me a favor. Your dad owed you a favor. Who's your father? He's an archivist here. What? Fear. V. 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 You would not have known. How did you not <laughs> tell me? How did? What? You How would have, have come up this entire time, and you didn't? <laughs> no, I could not. It needed at least six months of processing, which is, frankly, still very quick. Okay, I can't be mad at you because you did get me the library to turn the card to my favorite library in the entire world. Who's your dad? What's your dad's name? What's your dad? He pulls out a book. He's like, what's your dad's name? I need to know because I'm going to go find him. Gwen, Gwen, he's an archivist. He doesn't actually interact with the public. Like, that's actually the opposite. Okay, but he would definitely want to talk to me. He probably would talk to me. I have some things to tell him. I have some theories, and I think he would probably enjoy them. No. Okay, well, if you won't give me his name, will you at least promise? And he starts pulling out, like, a paper from his book, and it's, like, a good 60 pages long. Uh Uh-oh. He puts it in your arms. Can you possibly just give him this manuscript? I just need someone to read the manuscript and tell me if it's any good. And I feel like your dad would be a good starting point. So if you could just give it to him. We don't publish the books. Yeah, but he would tell me if it's worthy of being archived. Do you know what I mean? No, no, he wouldn't. He's the nerd that cleans the mold off of them and, like, rebinds them. Oh my god, that's so cool! He has, like, the big, like, starry eyes. Fuck. It's very easily impressed, this one. I love it. No, it's just Gwen is a nerd. He is a nerdy, nerdy nerd. Yep. And he's just found out that V's dad is also a nerd. For your knowledge, player's knowledge, uh, his name is Verit. V-E-R-E-T. Okay. Excellent. But Gwen does not know that because V is definitely not telling you because he does not want you bothering his family. I'm going to find a way. All I have to do is look up like your family tree, which I know has got to be somewhere. (laughs) I finally like settle down and I just like give you this look. This is the best day. Well, no, it's not the best day of my life because the Serathiel thing early was very upsetting. But this is very close to the best day of my entire life. So, um, you were really that nervous about it? Y- yeah. Weren't you? I mean, what if he- what if he'd been the god he darned all of that? What if that was the only thing keeping him- I mean, I love Serathiel. Like, he- I know he has my back no matter what, but- but the god eater is not Serathiel. He's not our Serathiel. And our Serathiel is not the god eater. If he's the same person- he would be the same person underneath that mark. I guess so. I just... You don't always know who people are. Even people you like. Even people you love. I, I'm glad to know that he's not... It seems like he's not the God Eater. We, something would have happened already. Probably. Right? Right, V? Right? Yeah. I don't know, but I would think there would have been some sign. But... I don't know. Was I really the only one who who was nervous? Of course I was nervous, but I had faith. I think V is going to get the team together, you know, minus Serathiel, he's giving you your space. He's got a couple things to say. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think we want to do this before Serathiel heads out. You guys are going to meet up somewhere again off AppTap property. Probably just the little park that you met at last time. V has already talked to Gwen about the whole maybe have a little faith in him kind of thing. Chaz was clearly already on that mindset. Mm. 
V still looks nervous. Not nervous that Serathiel's going to do anything. He just looks nervous because he just broke the mark. <laughs> this is the one thing that he is supposed to prevent. Chaz arrives five minutes late with Starbucks. He's like, yep, yeah, I'm ready. You're meeting in that little grove. There's a private wood it's near one of the chapels or something. It's away from prying eyes. There's not a lot of people around. So it's easy to just be away from people and talk privately. <laughs> he still looked nervous. And I think he steals your uh, fantasy Starbucks chess because you arrived late. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, fine. <laughs> and you didn't bring any to share. I feel like the implication of 10 minutes late with Starbucks means you have to bring Starbucks for everyone, Chaz. Right? If you didn't bring enough to share, you shouldn't have fucking gone out. <laughs> I mean, like, you at least bring donuts or something. <laughs> He's like, wow, okay, next time. No, on a, on a serious note, I don't think it's a good idea to be in town for a while. When um, you were thinking of going home with your mom, right? I mean, yeah, well, I've got to... I've got to take her home to my dad and, and deal with that nonsense. That's going to go well. <laughs> it uh, might be better to do that sooner rather than later. I I don't exactly know what's going to happen as a result of this, but I, I don't want you guys implicated in anything. Oh, so what? You assume that I have an estate somewhere secluded on a mountain, V? Where do you expect me to go? I mean, you're welcome to come with me, I guess, or something, but I just, I don't think the city is going to be safe for a little while. I mean, you can come home with me, but I don't think you'd enjoy it. it I mean, it, it seems like a rather private thing, yeah, but um, meeting your dad, though, that sounds very funny. I, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Daz is actually quite shocked. Oh, oh, you agree? Oh, that it's no, it's not funny anymore, then. <laughs> v is just like, well, you built another one of the bracers, I just thought don't worry. I'm sure that I'll find something to occupy my time with. Oh, so you're just taking the piss then. I just, I don't want any of you guys caught up in this. This was my responsibility. And I, I care about you both. I don't think it was just your responsibility. I feel like we're all embroiled in this. Right. I think you're a little bit confused. I agree. I'm literally his handler, Gwen. Right, but Serathiel specifically was your responsibility, but everything else that we did was, you know, all on us. I'm not worried about that. Look, um, the administrant made some threats last time I spoke with her about the mark, and I just don't want you caught up in that. Did she? What, what kind of threats? It's not important. It, I'll be fine. B, we're part of this too. Don't just, don't just shut us out. We're, we're a party. We're in this together. The safest thing this party can do right now is split up. That is never the right answer. I have learned. <laughs> <laughs> never split the party. This is your DM saying, don't fuck with my story. <laughs> okay, well, will you at least promise, do you have one of the sending stones? Will you at least promise to make sure you keep in touch? Jazz is like, oh, you're very funny if you don't think I'm not tapping him at, at all times anyway, regardless. Creepy. So if we're all going, wh where's where's Chaz gonna go? Where where are you gonna go, Vernon? And, and where the fuck is Serathiel gonna go? Excuse my language. I shouldn't use bad words. I don't know if Serathiel's going anywhere, but like, the the point is, I don't I want it you to have deniability that you weren't here when it happened. I've always wanted to travel. Okay, but you just remember our promise earlier today, okay, Vernon? Please. I know. I I too. Oh, secret promises, eh? Oh, God's Chaz, come on. It's Ew, he's old enough to be my dad. I mean, has that stopped has that stopped literally anybody before? Okay, no. Let's get this train back on the tracks. Trains are apparently now a thing in Faerun. I uh trust me, I'll I'll ask you guys for help if I need it. That's all we can ask for. Yeah, I, I guess so. Chaz, you've got, quote, vacation days anyway, don't you? I don't know that you've ever taken a vacation. I don't even know what that word means, to be honest, but I'd love to go exploring. Traveling. Ooh, sounds exciting. <laughs> Team goes their separate ways. 
V is going to talk with you, Chaz. He's not pushing you out, but it still would be safer to just go to a different city. Have you been wanting to see Neverwinter or something? Just give yourself a little bit of an alibi and he'll help you pick a space. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, Neverwinter, that's a great idea. I want to find the Tremaine estate and immediately egg it hey, and TP hey. it. <laughs> Motherfuckers. <laughs> and it would be well-deserved. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick your ass. He's like, ooh, vandalism. <laughs> what was that? Like some minor noble's house, Trefane or whatever their name was. I can't God. remember. Yeah, that was it. No, you're right. It was Trefane. <laughs> <laughs> Hate all of you. <laughs> all right, I guess the question is, is this like the final? Is this like we're leaving tonight? We're not going to see each other for a while? You guys are welcome to see V. I just out of character. Something's going to happen tonight. In character, you think it's just another day, but V has basically told you, get out of town soon, so you have some deniability. I'll plan for it. Okay, then I wouldn't do anything special, like go to anybody and give like big hugs or anything. No. That's, that would more likely raise more red flags. Yeah, I'm just gonna go back to my dorm room and read my warlock book. I'll tell V and Chaz that, you know, I'll see him tomorrow. And before I leave, I kind of like hesitate outside of Serathiel's door and um, sit there for a couple seconds. I think especially interesting heard. Just a quiet room. You don't want to say anything? I think about it. Like, you see him put his hand up to almost knock on the door, and then he sort of changes his mind. You hear him sort of say under his breath, like, I hope you're, hope you're doing well, old friend. And then he, he heads out. It's a little bit later in the evening. It's after dinner. He knows that you haven't gone to dinner. Yes, correct. And I think he just knocks on your door. It's a bit of a protracted pause. And then eventually here, come on in, Vienin. <laughs> he opens up the door. So uh, is my knock that recognizable? No, but your gate is. So a quick description. Serathiel is currently shirtless. Looks like he was in the process of changing. He has his back to the door and all up his back, over his shoulders, and about three quarters of the way down his arms are glistening red dragon scales. Ooh, damn. That is a sorcerer feature. His sorceress origin is draconic ancestry, obviously. He's literally half dragon. I feel like speechless is Vernon's immediate response to that. But he comes in and he closes the door. Did those... did they just appear? They've been coming in for uh, a few weeks now. I hadn't mentioned it to you because I was ashamed and terrified of the implications. He pulls a shirt over his head. I'm not quite so terrified anymore, however. I am what I am. They are what they are. I can't get rid of them, although I wish I could. They itch like hell. <laughs> well, uh, I've got some liniment that could probably help with that. Told me. Did you pack me a lunch for fleeing Aptap? <laughs> Potions as well. He kind of sighs. Oh, Vernon. Oh, look, I'm concerned about you. I'm concerned about the whole team, but... You really should know better. You have a fiancé. I have a twin soul. <sighs> I won't for much longer. What? Is that why... He's still getting used to his... 20 int score. He's like making connections that he absolutely would never have made before. And he's finally connecting the dots. He says, That's why you've been so tired. You've been exhausting all options trying to save your family, and you've realized that the only way to save your future children is to ensure that they don't exist. Is that it? Pretty much. And I mean, who knows? I'm. I'm a twin soul too. Maybe, maybe she never was supposed to end up with me anyway. That sounds like a, uh, a very neat and tidy excuse. <sighs> it's not, it's not about you. I certainly hope not. I'm not worth the trouble. I wish you wouldn't say things like that, but I know that my wishing won't change it. I just mean, I'm not worth breaking up a marriage over. It's... I... <sighs> have you, like, met me, Vannon? I am an emotional mess. You've met me, right? I'm scared of myself and my power. I'm scared of my twin soul, which speaks a lot to my own personal misgivings. 
It's just, I don't understand what you see in me. You are kind. You are selfless. You think before you swing your sword. I mean, as much as you were allowed to. But again, it's, I'm doing this for her. Even if, even if she survived it, I don't think she would have survived losing our children. I, I'm telling her, and I think, I think she'll break it off. But if she doesn't, I will. Ah, oh, Vanon. You have exquisite taste in women and horrible taste in men. <laughs> Sarathiel takes the bag from Viernan and opens it. Is there actually a wrapped sandwich or something like that? Did he actually put food in there along with, like, poultice and whatever? A mutton chop and a note. <laughs> I mean, it's probably more like trail food, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I just, you haven't taken care of yourself and you haven't let anyone else take care of you. Just, just let me do this. He stares at the uh, sandwich for a while and he says, I guess I'm just not used to what it feels like being taken care of. I mean, for what it's worth, I, I appreciate the thought. Do you, um, do you know where you're going to go? Yes. Do you? I mean, I have an idea or two. And you know that I wouldn't advise it, but... I'm also not going to stop you. I'll be safe and I won't be beyond reach. And I'll come back. But I I have to do this. If um if you feel that way, I understand. In the outside pocket there there's a sending stone so you can reach us if you need to. Yeah, yeah. I expected as much. It's uh, Chaz's idea. They're uh, I'm making sure that everybody gets out of the administrant's way. I don't think she's going to react well when you're uh, missing. Oh, I've um, I've set up a few precautions. I don't think they'll last forever, but uh, it should give me at least a week or two before she notices. <laughs> um, you realize you can't just say that. Like, what? Are, what are you talking about? Don't worry about it. The less you know, the better. He pats Vernon on the cheek, and then his hand kind of lingers, and then he realizes what exactly it is he's doing, and he kind of slowly retracts the hand. I should, um, I should get going. Before anybody tries to stop you, yeah. Just, um, stay safe. I will. And he heads past Vernon. As Viernan crosses the river, he sees a familiar figure waiting for him on the embankment. He sighs, not sure he's up to dealing with Belantiel right now, but that's never stopped the dragon from butting in before. Sure enough, he's barely stepped off the bridge before Belantiel confronts him. You know where he's headed, and you're just, what, letting him go alone? He needs space, Belantiel. Not everything can be fixed with a few words or a pat on the head. So what? You just let him rush right back to that monster? Sometimes you have to let your loved ones make mistakes so that they can learn from them. Belantiel scoffs and sneers, about to tease him once again about his twin soul bond, no doubt. And Viernin feels something snap inside of himself. Yes, I love him, all right. The words leave him before Viernan has a moment to think. But tell me, do you actually care how he feels, or what happens to him? His voice is rising, but luckily the streets are empty at this hour. Even if they weren't, V isn't sure he'd care anymore. What the hell is your angle, Belantiel? What are you trying to accomplish? And I think V is going to try to use Detect Thoughts on Belle, which could go well or could go badly. So let's do a little roll. 
Oh. Not good enough, V. Against a dragon? Yeah, good luck. 17's a good roll, but for literally a dragon? And I think Bell is literally, he's going to use Mind Blank immediately. And he uses Mind Spike, which is a psychic damage spell. Mm, ouch. And it lets him know where V goes for the rest of the hour. <laughs> you hit my boy. How dare you? Yep. That's straight up combat. That's like some roll initiative shit. Luckily, V has a brain cell and, you know, doesn't do anything. He's squishy. He's not going to actually fight a dragon. He knows better than that. But he wanted to get like some surface level ideas of things and then a little below the surface because Bell is sketchy as fuck. Like, why is he still hanging around? So yeah, they don't part on the best of circumstances, but they also don't blow up a wing of Aptap or anything. So that's uh, not nothing. I'm going to go find Tanya, yes. Oh, and last time I think you had uh, damaged the bracer trying to find Algodon, if I remember correctly. Rolled a nat one, and I was like, well, I can't do that anymore, so I'm going to go to the market instead. <laughs> so I need to fix it. But first I need to tell Bestie about, you know, stuff. Yeah. So I'm going to go find her. Where do I find her? Is she in her office? Let me guess. <laughs> Let's see, who else here is a workaholic? <laughs> he definitely comes bearing gifts, cookies, snacks, and he's like, really, really, you have to leave this room sometimes. You can't just live here. You know that I don't. I go home. For like, what, an hour? <laughs> Longer than that. Ooh, two hours. Ooh. What do you want, Chaz? I want to have a picnic with my best friend. Is that so bad? Yeah, teasing me. All right. All right. Give me just, just a second. And she tidies up the papers that she'd been working on, locks up the more sensitive files, etc. I love the implication of the drow being like, let's go out and get some sunshine. <laughs> you have your hats. Also, like, you love nature. <laughs> exactly. There are covered courtyards and other things you could also go to. Indeed. So let's say that's that's exactly where we go, somewhere where there's like shade, you know, safe to be out. Yeah, I think it's something that's kind of like the cloisters. Mm. There's a couple courtyards at Aptap, and some of them are a little more covered than others. You find a spot, and it's one of your usual places. It's not too far a walk, and she sits down next to you. What's um? What's on your mind, Chaz? Well, to be honest, a lot. <laughs> a lot is on my mind. But specifically, you. Have you ever thought about traveling? Like, outside of Silvery Moon, I mean. So when, when he said you, she was like about to be like, you know I'm a lesbian, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow, after all these years, you still think I'm into you? Obviously, I, if I had better taste, I would be, but... But you had continued on, so anyway. Right, anyway. There's not a lot of places that are terribly friendly to me. Mm. True. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I perhaps, maybe, did a little digging and ask some... Uh, I think they were jewelers. I don't really remember. <laughs> if they needed a bodyguard, perhaps, so... You know I can't even lift a sword, right? I, I know the pointy end goes into the other guy, but like, beyond that, I'm pretty useless. Right. But other people don't know that. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know where your strengths are. Your strengths are in bookkeeping and financial records and, you know, legal loopholes. I know that about you, and I love that about you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if you're interested... What what brought this on? He gets very serious very quickly. Oh, I don't like that look. All right, you definitely have to tell me now. I saw the destruction of Silvery Moon. What? In one possible timeline, it's all gone. If she weren't already sitting, Tanya would have definitely needed to sit at that news. 
as it is her hand, which had a drink or something in it, just too carefully sets the thing down so she doesn't break it. What, um, what happens? Good question. Going back to notes. <laughs> it's like, that was a long time ago. Yeah, that was in another campaign, like the first season. Bashaba raises an army of demons and devils and destroys it. Right. You saw the aftermath. You saw the regrowth afterwards. Well, I don't exactly know, but it took a while to come back from whatever happened. Well, I hate that. Um, right, of course. I hate it too. There's no way we can... Uh, no, we can't change something that big. That would be a fixed event. Right, and you know there's no one else I care about more than you, Tanya. You know that, right? I would do anything for you. You know I'd do anything for you too, Chaz. She looks conflicted. She knows that you're being so vulnerable right now. And she just hugs you. He clings to her very tightly. Now, out of character, I also find this hilarious because it's not happening for a hundred years. And she's a half-orc. <laughs> She's definitely gonna die before it ever gets to that part. Well, in my elven time, it's gonna happen tomorrow. Which is valid, and I love you, because this does help establish that elves know nothing about time, as it passes for most other races. <laughs> I've loved this, because it, it shows Chaz evolving as an individual. Yeah. And I love it, but like, also, wow, you're a little uh, short-sighted there, buddy. <laughs> Did it? Do we actually know the timeline? Like, does he know the framework of like when it's gonna happen, or did I just? I can't remember if V told you or not. I I think V would have told you if V knew, and V found his own file, so I would imagine. Hmm. Okay. Although I really do like the idea of Chess genuinely not knowing how long other races live. She's like, how long do I have to prepare? She's like, Pro oh, probably only a century. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I'll be dead. And he's like, no, that's worse. After some consideration, Serathiel decides that the best place to do it would be outside of Sulfury Moon entirely. He knows what Shemeshka is, even if he doesn't know her reputation, and he doesn't trust her not to have something up her sleeve. If there's going to be collateral damage, it's worth the effort to minimize it. So he'd settled on the Laughing Boar, a tiny little tavern set up exactly a day's ride northwest of the city, strategically chosen to be the only place to rest in for those on their way to Mithril Hall. It's well into the evening when he arrives, his hood up and his head down. He pays for a meal and an ale, chooses a table, breaks the seal on her letter, and waits. He doesn't have to wait long. Well, 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 Serathiel the God Eater in the flesh. Shemeshka, he says without looking up. Thank you for agreeing to speak with me. Anything for an old friend, she says, sinking into the chair just across from Serathiel, allowing the elf his first look at her. Her appearance catches him off guard. He knows she's a demon but he hadn't expected a demon to be covered with glossy mottled fur, sporting a long snout and flashing yellow eyes. Still, he'd be the first to admit that there was something fundamentally sinister and unsettling about her. You certainly chose a dingy little slice of nowhere for us to meet, she says, head swiveling on her long neck to look around the ground floor of the tavern. It's dimly lit and sparsely populated, with one muttering tavern keep and a few scattered bands of travelers counting coins and discussing plans. Don't trust me, do you? I'm sure you don't take it personally, Serathiel says. Certainly not, Shemeshka chuckles. I just find it uh, revealing, is all. Bel Bel really is deluding himself, isn't he? Serathiel opens his mouth, but no words come. He's tempted to ask how precisely she knows Belantiel, what their relationship is like, but he doesn't. He couldn't entirely trust any answer that came out of her mouth, after all. And even if he could, it's not sure he'd want to know the answer. I've come to make a deal with you, Trickster. What, straight to business? I'm disappointed. 
You should at least buy a girl a drink first. Rather than entertain the notion, Serathiel reaches behind his chair, where against the wall, tied into its sheath, is the massive greatsword, God Eater. He hefts it up by the crossguard and sets it on the table between them. Shemeshka's eyes land on it immediately. Something like a smile curls at the edges of her long muzzle. Oh, very well. She surrenders, making a poor attempt at hiding her sudden glee. To business, then. What is it you want from me, friend? Passage. Serathiel answers at once. A way into sigil and a way out. To be used at my own discretion, of course. A set of scrolls should do. Shemeshka leans back in her chair. The aging wood groans in protest. Serathiel watches, unimpressed, as she strokes the underside of her chin with two fingers, as if she hasn't already decided on her answer. Mm, That's quite the ask, she says. A spell like that is no mean feat, but two of them? False modesty is unbecoming of you, Serathiel answers. You and I both know what I've asked is not beyond your skill. For a long time, Shemeshka is silent, and so is Serathiel. After a heavy, protracted pause, Shemeshka leans forward slowly, bracing both paws on the table. It's not beyond the God-Eater's skill either, she says. I am not the God-Eater, Serathiel returns flatly. But your magic is returning, Shemeshka counters finally managed to break that pesky little mark, did you? Are we going to strike a bargain, demon? Serathiel says. Or am I just wasting my time? What is it you're hoping to find in Sigil? I know the plane well, and though it's not without its wonders, it doesn't have much to interest outsiders. False ignorance is also unbecoming. (laughs) You are a sentimentalist after all, my friend. I am not your friend. She's still leaning across the table, and her wicked, curling smile has not faded an inch. If anything, it's intensified. Serathiel could, if he cared to, count every needle-sharp tooth in her muzzle. But it could be, she says eventually. In another life. Another world. The sound of paper scraping over wood draws Serathiel's eye down to the table. Two scrolls, each bound with black ribbon and sealed with red wax, had appeared in front of him. The sword, on the other hand, had disappeared soundlessly. Could we really? Serathiel asks. Do you think the God Eater would ever have real friends? No, of course not. But I would certainly be the closest thing to a friend he would be capable of maintaining. Something like a confidant. Something like a peer. And that pleases you. We would be very alike, he and I. Both very determined, power-driven, talented with magic. Both fundamentally untrustworthy. So would it please me to be his friend? Of course not. He wouldn't have friends and neither would I. But it certainly would be... interesting. Shemeshka stands. The legs of her chair scrape feebly against the floor. It still is. She says, I'll be keeping an eye on you, Serathiel. Both eyes. Have fun in sigil. Hey everyone, Val here. Thank you for tuning in to the latest episode of Crit Fail Club, Restoration. If you can't wait to hear what happens next, check out our Discord server for episodes in pre-release, or to listen in live as we record. You can join us by going to bit.ly slash cfcdiscord. For more information on the show, character biographies, and links to social media, head to our website, critfail.club or critfailclub.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. We don't advertise at all, so if you like what you hear, tell a friend who might also enjoy the show. Post on social media about it, or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Full episodes are available on our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash CFC channel, or on other major podcast platforms. Thanks again for tuning in. <laughs>